our next guest here at the Ice Cream Social is Allison Damota Santos. Um, Allison is the winner of the Masters Poster Contest. Uh, Allison, tell us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. First of all, wow. I, I do consume a lot of the Balkan uh, content in the form of the podcast. I actually just got my t-shirt last week. Yeah, good. And um, also the webinar series. So thank you for putting the content out there. Uh, very welcome. Um, so I'm a, I'm from originally from Brazil, Middle West region of Brazil. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in veterinary medicine from the University of Mato Grosso. So also in the Middle West region of Brazil. Um, I always had the, the dream and the interest in becoming a scientist, um, especially with focus on reproduction. Uh, I did some work back back in Brazil with um, beef cattle reproduction, and in 2014, I had the, the chance to come to America for a exchange program, and then I met Dr. Persley, who invited me to come back for for um, a master's degree, which I just recently finished, and I did we did some research on investigating conceptus attachment in lactating dairy cows. And now I'm just starting my first study of my PhD. So what, what kindled your interest in agriculture? Did you grow up on the farm? I did not, no. I grew up in a small town of, that was surrounded by, by bee farms mostly. Um, and just, I, I normally tell people that just by smelling the, the cow <laughs> in the air that got me interested in it. And also my mom was a biologist, so I got to go with her to the field and collect samples all the time. Um, so that kind of got me in interested in that. and. In high school, I did a few internships that made the decision yeah. to become a scientist in that oh, area. Excellent. Yeah, glad to have you in the, indus in the yeah. industry. Thank we you. We need more good people like yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the title of your poster was Effects of GNRH as a Resynchronization Tool in Lactating Dairy Cows. Tell us what the thesis was. How did you come up with uh, that, that uh, topic? Of course, yeah. So um, in the, the dairy industry, there's a lot of... Um, not not just pressure, but a lot of interest in, in giving cows more opportunity to become pregnant as soon as possible. So that's why you have to be uh, more like dedicated and to resynchronize cows as soon as possible after their first service. So that's where our interest came into uh, light. Uh, so pr providing generate treatments prior to the first pregnancy diagnosis in order to set cows up for success in the um, development of the follicle. So once they're diagnosed as open, they can be bred on the following week um, if they are, they are open. So yeah, just shortening the, the interval between services, it was our main interest in that. Okay, yeah, interesting. So what, so what were your findings from your study? So in our study, we're comparing basically three treatments. Um, all of them included off sync at the end, um, in, the, in the case of the control group, that only received off-sync, and we also had two treatments that had one GnRH prior to the start of off-sync, and two GnRHs, the other treatment had two GnRHs prior to the start of off-sync. Uh, the main findings um, have to do with that all the treatments were effective in inducing multiple corpus lutea, so indicating that all these treatments were effective in synchronizing cows, um, setting them up for success after off-sync. And also we have, according to our um, more recently model, we collected daily samples of the cows starting on day 16, all the way to 828 post AI. We're able to measure a protein in the cow's blood that was very um, highly correlated with pregnancy. Mm. So with that protein, we can use a calculation to estimate the time that the embryo attaches to the uterus. So what, what is it that determines when, when attachment takes place? We, we can uh, use this protein to uh, put in a calculation, which is basically a, an increase of 12.5% from the cow's baseline. So we use the cow as her own control. And that has to be in addition to two daily increases. So two days following that first increase of that same or greater increase. So 12.5% or greater. And that would indicate that the embryo attached to the uterus at that first increase. So that's very, very... Um, it's 100% accurate in predicting that increase in pregnant cows. So, so when when does that implantation typically take place? So that's that's where the most interesting finding came to light, um, because normally that could take place anytime between day 19 to day 25. However, um, the cows that have later time to attachment, 
more more specifically the cows on day 22 or later they're way they're highly more likely to lose that pregnancy so that opens up a whole new universe for si for us to figure out what's driving that later attachment and how to bring this cows to an earlier attachment yeah okay so that's that's early embryonic death at that point is, uh, is that how it's counted or not um yeah we call it pregnancy loss yeah yep so yeah these cows that have later attachment they're very like way more likely to lose pregnancy yeah. so we, we just call it pregnancy loss Allison, you're obviously a very bright and articulate young man and got a bright future ahead of you. Give me a little idea of what your aspirations are. What are you going to do after you complete your master's degree? Um, so, yeah, I just I, I recently just graduated from a master's degree this spring okay. and I started my first study. Um, actually, this study is on hold right now because I'm at ADSA. Um, but I started my first study of my PhD. Okay. So, and after my PhD, I, at Michigan State. Yes. Yeah, okay. With Dr. Persley. Okay. His brilliant mind, you know, yep. it, it, it caught us. Um, yeah, but yeah, so I plan on finishing my PhD with Dr. Persley and then pursuing a career in science. Okay. Their science. Okay. In academia, you're going to go into industry. Do you know yet? I um, don't want to push you anyway, but <laughs> if you're interested in going to industry. <laughs> I, I mean, I, at this point... We'll hold a spot for you. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to, to make that decision right now, yeah. but um, I'm leaning towards more the uh, academia side of it. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, you know, there's, I, as I mentioned, there's this whole u new universe that opened up in reproduction that we got to investigate. So yeah. I kind of, I'm, I'm interested in that. Yeah. But it's, as I, as I said, it's really hard to make the decision in your first semester of your PhD. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thank you very much for stopping by to spend some time with thank us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We'd love to hear your comments or ideas for topics and guests. So please reach out via email to anh.marketing at balchem.com with any suggestions, and we'll work hard to add them to the schedule. Don't forget to leave a five-star rating on your way out. You can request your Real Science Exchange t-shirt in just a few easy steps. Just like or subscribe to the Real Science Exchange and send us a screenshot along with your address and t-shirt size to anh.marketing at balchem.com. Balchem's Real Science Lecture Series of webinars continues with ruminant-focused topics on the first Tuesday of every month, monogastric-focused topics on the second Tuesday of each month, and quarterly topics for the companion animal segment. Visit balchem.com slash realscience to see the latest schedule and to register for upcoming webinars. <laughs>